Hello students, today's agenda is to check homework. We'll be learning about different types of graphs and you will be able to work on 1.3. Today's students will be able to graph continuous, discrete, and step graphs. And so we're gonna come up with real scenarios, things that really happen. Um, and so the first one says, you drive 35 miles per hour. And so how would that graph look like? This type of graph would be a continuous graph because you're not, um, well, you're driving, 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 driving at a constant 35 miles per hour. Okay, let's say that traffic is heavy on the freeway and you're just driving at that rate. And so what we're gonna do is um, on the y-axis, we're going to write the miles. We're gonna put the miles. And then on the x-axis, we're going to put the hours, okay? Remember that this is dependent on this one, okay? The miles that you drive depend on how many hours you've been driving. And so we're gonna put in here the appropriate unit would be zero hours, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, etc. Okay, and on the on the y-axis, we're gonna just put it to make our lives easy. We're just gonna put 35, 70. So I'm just adding 35 each time, 105, 140, 175, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, um, again, we said that this is a continuous graph, and the reason is because you're going to continue driving, and so you draw a line through the points. So you start at home, zero miles at zero minutes. Um, after one hour, you have driven 35 miles, but you don't, you didn't automatically after one hour appear there. You were driving the 35 miles. After two hours is 70, after three hours is 105, after four hours is 140 miles, after five is 175. And so it's continuous because you can just, uh, whoops, draw this continuously and you know that six hours is gonna be the next one and you're gonna be at 210, I believe. 25%, yeah, 210. So you know that at any of these points, you're gonna be at the right and it's continuous. You draw the line because you're driving constantly. You're not stopping or you're not peering from here and all of a sudden you're here, and all of a sudden, no, it's continuously, okay? The next graph that we're gonna do is the discrete graph, and what that means is um, you're not gonna have the line, and I'll explain why. So it says, you go to the store, and buy boxes of apples. Each box has six apples. And so how would the graph for that look? So on the Y, we're gonna put the total number of apples and how many apples do you have? Depend on the number of boxes that you buy. Okay, so this is independent. And the apples are dependent. The, the apples that you have depend on how many boxes you buy. Okay, so I'm gonna put zero boxes, one box, two boxes, three boxes, four, five, okay? And on this side, I'm just gonna go again to make our lives easier. 
6 by 6, so 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, etc. Okay, and so what is a discrete graph? Discrete graph has only points. What that means is that if I buy one box, I'm going to have six apples. But then I cannot connect it because I cannot say, oh, I'm going to have, I'm going to buy half a box and have three apples. That's not possible. You cannot do that when you go to the store and it's pre-packaged already. And yes, there are some places like the flea market or, or like the farmer's market where you can buy by the piece and you just weigh it. But if it's in boxes, then you would be using a discrete graph. Two boxes is 12 apples. Three boxes is 18 apples. Four boxes gives you a total of 24 apples. Five is 30 and six is 36 and so on. Um, so again, I cannot connect it because it can be that you buy only one apple or two apples or three yes. in packages of six. So you have to buy um, each time per box. Okay, the next one, oh, and let me write in the previous one, let me write, um, it's a discrete graph. Okay, this is a discrete graph. You do not connect it. It's not continuous. It's discrete. Okay. Okay, the next one is called the step graph. And this one is very interesting. I, I didn't think about it until I looked at the graph. But it says you pay $10.00 per additional gigabyte. So how would that graph look like? Well, I'm gonna put on the Y, I'm gonna put the money that I pay. And in here is the additional gigabytes. I think that's how it's spelled. I'm putting different spellings here. Okay, so I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five. I don't think we go that far because that it can get really expensive, but okay, what this means is that let's say that I spent all my free gigabytes that they give me with the plan not really free, but <laughs> with the plan. And so I pay zero dollars, okay? And then if I'm gonna start using some of the data, so 0.5, I already have to pay $10, okay? I start, I end up with that, so this will be open. And then I close it here, meaning that I pay Starting here, I start paying for the additional gigabyte. And I think, you know what? This should be open. And then, I pay starting right here to, to add another gigabyte. And as soon as I go beyond that, I paid an additional $10. So that's 20. And then I use part of the second gigabyte. I use part of it, part of it, and I get to two gigabytes. Okay, I still have with the $20 up to that two gigabytes. I don't pay any additional money. But then I get to start a new gigabyte. And so I'm gonna pay an additional ten dollars and so on okay 
What does that mean? That I use 3.5, 3.9 of the next gigabyte, and I still with that $10, okay? What other examples are like this? When you pay rent, right? You pay the rent at the beginning, and then it lasts you for a whole month. Then another month starts, you have to pay a new month worth of rent. Or also when you're paying for insurance, which covers you for maybe three months, okay? Um, you pay at the beginning. Let's say, let's do that one. Um, hopefully I'm not giving you, getting another chance from you, but uh, let's see, money and then months. And I'm talking about insurance. Okay, uh, let's say that you pay for month one, two, and three. You pay at the beginning. And actually you pay $300. That's not it. You pay at the beginning and it lasts you for three months. You don't have to pay anything. But then comes that third month you pay another 300, right? So close it in there because it's starting a new set of three months, four, five, six, okay? Uh, and you don't pay anything for month four, you don't pay anything for month five or month six, actually. Then comes month six, the end of it, and you pay. Oh, this is open, okay? That should be open. So let me, let me open it, because it looks kind of close. Okay, but then you pay the, the, the fee for another three months, and so it goes all the way to nine, and so on. And so that's how this step graph goes, that you pay at the beginning, and then you don't pay until, again, the next three sets, and so on. Um, there are some graphs where you have an open circle at the beginning and you pay at the end. And I think those are more like if you're buying or going to a restaurant and you're buying uh, food and then you pay at the end. You buy one pizza, you pay at it, pay for it, and then you start eating the second one and you pay at the end. So something like that. Um, so I hope uh, this helped you for 1.3 and... Have fun.